Hello and welcome to a new series of Nature's Little Recyclers videos. As you can no doubt tell from our presentation so far, we are in the early developmental states of our worm business, but we have some serious plans for upcoming expansion. Among these is the ability to move into a new facility, site, or city, and within a short period of time set up a worm operation from scratch. While we could do this by transporting existing worm populations, today we are testing a system which should allow us to start a fresh installation. Here we have a new bin with some excelsior shredded wood to serve as a base for the worms. One of the key factors of our urban vermiculture approach is providing the worms with very clean foods. Representing the bulk of what our worms eat is shredded waste cardboard, newsprint, and office paper. This is part of their extremely positive environmental impact. Of course, even the worms wouldn't be too interested in dry paper and cardboard, so here we've added enough water to soak through the shredded mass, but not so much that it's going to be runny. This is the other main item on the worms menu, waste espresso grounds, currently provided by the Capital One 360 Cafe in downtown Chicago. So far we've been using espresso grounds, but regular coffee would work too. Here I'm mixing up the coffee with the wet shredded paper and cardboard. If you were a worm, this would be a very attractive place to be, as the combination of the two is a rich and balanced food source. It's amazing how much coffee society goes through on an ongoing basis. The coffee shops of downtown Chicago alone produce nearly 40 tons of waste coffee per week, and we're trying to make sure that as much of that as possible goes to feed the worms, rather than end up in a landfill. Since we're starting new here, I'm adding another element to the bedding, some coir, which is the shredded outer husks from coconuts, and is a sustainable alternative to peat moss, and another example of how a one-time waste item is being put to good use. This will help provide a fiber matrix interspersed with the excelsior. Now we can add in the food, the wet shredded cardboard and paper mixed with espresso grounds. While this mixture may look something like soil, it's just the food which the worms will eat and then produce the actual soil by leaving behind rich organic vermicast, which is, yes, worm poop. Speaking of worm poop, we just pulled some caviar compost out of one of the other bins to give a start for this one. While the worms do most of the heavy lifting, there are also bacteria that play a significant role, and this gets those established. The reason this is a test bin is that we're trying out a product called Vermipods, which are assorted worm egg cocoons encased in a clay coating. These are designed for farm applications, but we thought it would be a way to start new composting populations in a reasonably controlled setting. Obviously, if we were to be setting up production in additional cities, it would be much easier just to ship out boxes of these instead of subjecting many buckets of worms to the journey. To start, I figured that I'd mix these in with the compost, giving them the closest approximation of being in the ground as we can with a new bin. I'm trying to get as even a distribution through this as possible here, and again we're testing out a new procedure and we'll have to see how this goes. Now we can add these to the rest of the mix. If we were just starting a new bin with a bunch of worms from an existing bin, we'd probably have a lot more material in here, but since we're going to have to wait a few weeks for the worms to hatch out of their cocoons, this will do. But I want to make sure I get the pods mixed in there so they're not just sitting up on top and will stay moist so the worms won't have to fight to get out of the clay. Usually, we cover the bin contents with a chunk of burlap that keeps things dark and moist and provides something of a barrier for the worms, although they do eventually eat through it. But since we're having to wait to have worms in this bin, I'm adding the rest of that coir across the top for the time being. Our current guesstimate is that, using this approach, it will take approximately two to three months to go from a brand new bin like we're starting today to a fully productive bin with an established population of worms converting paper, coffee, etc. into high quality compost. While we'll be checking in on this on a weekly basis, we know that it's going to take some time for the worms to hatch and start to grow. In an operating bin, the worm population doubles every 90 days or so, which suggests that a similar time frame will work here. Thank you.